Hello, beta testers. <laughs> we live in a filtered world. I've been demonetized, shadow banned, and the fact that some of you have still found this channel is nothing short of an algorithmic anomaly. The people ruining what we love hate few things more than themselves, and they'll go to great lengths to shield themselves from what they actually are or even look like. What does a life in conflict with your own reflection offer? In a word, foolishness. Naturally, some have bent to fit their delusion, and like a TikTok, Instagram, or Snapchat face filter, they'll warp, distort, and contour to a shape that suits their appetites. However, for some reason, it can't stop at acceptance. We need to find them appealing and are not allowed our own preference. Whereas actors and models might get surgeries to broaden their appeal, activists hope to warp people's minds to accept their hilarious new definitions of beauty, new definitions of everything, to the point where even Western video games can only do fugly because niggas in wigs might have themselves a pretend period over it. Recently, one of the shill normies named Destin caught flack from lazy game developers in the industry for reacting appropriately to their whining over Baldur's Gate 3. Appropriate reactions are of course unapproved and therefore incorrect, so the cult took issue. Destin would later cite a woman named Laura Fryer with industry experience from back when people were actually working instead of trying to convince people cock and ball trash is actually a 10 out of 10 beautiful woman. I was amused by how identical what she said was to points that real gamers have been making and articulately expressing for over 10 years, but sometimes the truth is it requires a different race or gender or both to say the same thing that you're saying to get the recognition it deserves. In a recent video of hers called Why Xbox Lost, she talks about being passed over in favor of inexperienced nobodies in so disrespectful a way that many were outraged on her behalf. Furthermore, she describes a breakdown of previous practices that gave structure to a hiring process, a process that should have allowed people say in whom was hired. But on an occasion she mentioned, and we have to assume many following, even though everyone voted no hire, the individual would still be hired. A story from an insider that alone may not be so crazy, but when so many stories from so many different people seem to corroborate a Saints Row reboot culture inside of many of these studios, I can't help but listen. I don't need to tell you they refuse to listen to us, beta tester. And we could easily assume reasonable, logical, and actually talented people on the inside were also ignored regardless of their expertise and worse, we imagine they were scared into silence, just like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and hell, even Steam is actively trying to filter you. Again, YouTube is pushing to hide the dislikes and is getting a little aggressive with its ad block notifications, enough for you to probably expect a paid subscription service akin to Netflix to become inevitable. Imagine it, paying for content on a hyper-policed service where your feedback is pre-hidden, approved messages only, shills and advertisers only. Everything else is just dressing, some lube to help the consumers slide right in so they can be tricked out of the money in their wallets like the suckers they are. I say all of this to let you know, now more than ever, your voice and your vote matters. Agenda versus fan service, bud, light this shit. These people might as well be screaming, look at me, look at me, and throwing paint all over anything that they consider to be better, but let me tell you something, these ain't our kids. We don't need to be paying for them to live comfortably when they're not even earning any of that damn pay, so I, I got other things. And 
maybe you've heard, but recently a $40 seasonal bundle for Overwatch goes up with a semi-sexy Lilith from Diablo locked inside the bundle. Can't purchase it separately regardless of whatever currency you may have had stocked up for, you know, this Overwatch cuck thing, but currently their community's in an uproar. The funny part to me is the comments always seem to have somebody saying something like, I'm not simping, but, or I'm not defending, but, and then they go on to defend and like bootlick here. I'm forced to remember people shilling Avengers, shilling Saints Row, disingenuous washed up hacks, shilling Redfall, apologizing and defending these hilariously greedy games that have come out unfinished with no guarantee that they're going to be finished. Some of them charged you early access and these people just like, mm, no, this is the standard. Baldur's Gate is bad. Rockstar lets you buy their shark cards for like in-game currency and Grand Theft Auto got away with a casino in the game. You know what I'm saying? Western games failing so hard in the appeal department that their subversive media killed Hollywood. Developers are so stupid that Halo, you know, is dead. Oh man, look through, look through my videos for a history of blunders, each more disappointing and confusing than the last, but manga, my nigga, it buries its competition. MiHoYo and its Genshin Impact Jiggle Physics waifus have so much money, they just keep making new games and people are eating that up too. Doke V has captured my imagination. Crimson Desert is going to raise the bar. Project Mugen is something to watch out for. First Ascendant, I can't take my eyes off it. And Stellar Blade is going to make Eve the new Lara Croft femme fatale. All these games have to do is stick the landing and the dev salty over Baldur's Gate will disintegrate because no one's listening. And if they are, it's to the talentless kids who can only cater to their own types? <laughs> the woke pronoun entities had their opportunity and they failed to adapt other people's material that would have worked if they didn't change it and race swap and gender swap it. I'm amused to see Lilith in Overwatch and Call of Duty. I'm surprised that she's not making her way to Fortnite. I have high hopes, maybe it's just October, but I believe GTA 6 will allow sexy, stacked women with jiggle physics for customization because of the data they're collecting as it pertains to your spending habits and what makes you buy. Destiny, Call of Duty, The Sims, Grand Theft Auto, FIFA, Fortnite, all these games offer explosive insight into what tracks among us. A great deal of people ignoring the data has gone on for years and I think Grand Theft Auto wants to be an amazing product more than it does a game these days. So how do you profit? <laughs> you observe your target, you analyze the data, and you recognize us belly laughing at ugly expecting money when we can go down to the Walmart and whale watch for free. If people can't be curvy naturally with all the jiggle physics technology allows in Grand Theft Auto 6, I think you can bet your bottom dollar and whatever other change you've got lying around that Grand Theft Auto 6 will sell you the ability to have plastic surgery. I know the girls among you have huge milkers and the dudes have big peckers, so none of you are probably aware, but $30 is what they charge Overwatch players for their season pass. Whoops, I should have said used to. $30 is what they used to charge Overwatch players for the season pass. Now it is $40 following a PvE event that came and went. And now in a new season, even though there's no new PvE content, they're still just sticking with the $40 price, which doesn't matter because people will pay and they can probably bump it up to $50 next month. Beta testers, we're supposed to take pity on these cucked losers somehow still playing Overwatch. To anyone who plays and is listening to this, trust us, we loved Halo more. We loved Diablo more. The list is endless, but when the greed stepped in, we cut the cord. Overwatch cucks keep this garbage alive, and if you don't say no to Activision Blizzard, you might as well be a Destiny player, or even worse, a Bethesda-loving Starfield apologist. 
even though woke blacklisted identity politics journalists will claim cyber assault over an optional cami skin, no one's forcing them to consume, to look, to buy, or to play. Manhunt, Rockstar, isn't just a game, it's the name of the game. Regardless of what people want to call themselves these days, the men are your core audience appeal. And not with agenda, with service. Because that's what the East is giving out these days. I promise you'll capture a whole new audience that you didn't even have for GTA 5 that's more than willing to support when they are satisfied. But don't do what Mortal Kombat did. Don't do what Saints Row did. Don't line up for any journalist shriers out there that are talking about, I can't believe a studio looks like this. People want actual equality. Show, don't tell. Thank you all so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and a special thanks to the patrons. If Rockstar can sell a full-priced, inferior conversion of a 13-year-old Red Dead Redemption, throw out absolute garbage, calling it a definitive edition, remove content from their game after receiving money for a literal decade, and go woke enough to Saints Row bandwagon by breaking what doesn't need fixing, then backwards is where we'll go. Beta tester. Even if they silence me, I love you enough to remind you that some people only hold power because they've convinced you you can't make a difference. But I know you can make a difference on my wish list. I'm going to put a toilet seat on there. Waka waka. Right. All right. Later.